The Senators lead the Rangers three games to two and are just one win away from their first trip to the conference final since 2007. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Back in 2017, the Ottawa Senators were legit. Because after years of drafting hidden gems, they had a cup contending roster. Mark Stone, a six round pick, who was developing into one of the best two way wingers in the league. Mike Hoffman, a 30 goal scorer, drafted in the fifth round. Ottawa moves in, Stone fires a shot, he scores! Thomas Shabbat in the system, Ryan Dezingle, Jean Gabriel Pajot, its seventh and fourth round pick, who developed into crucial bottom six players. And let's not forget about Eric Carlson, because the level of disrespect this man has been getting the past two years has been absurd. There was a reason why he won two Norris trophies. And no, he wasn't just a forward playing defense, because during his prime, Carlson had many positive defense seasons analytically. And the haters forget, he was a point per game defenseman in an era where scoring was at an all time low. In fact, if we compare the goal production from Eric Carlson's 2012 Norris win to the goal production we saw last season, Eric Carlson would have been on pace for 108 points. Only Paul Coffey and Bobby Orr are the two and only defensemen in history to surpass a 108 point season. So combine that with the fact that this Senators team had ample drafted depth and development in the system, led by a generational defenseman, there was a reason that they were only one goal away from making the Stanley Cup Finals in 2017. Except... Crosby, Crosby on two minutes and seconds! Penguins win it! And they got to the final! After the steady rise of the Senators, Everything would change in the following seasons after this goal. In 2016, Ottawa would make a horrendous trade, sending Mika Zibanejad to the Rangers, the franchise center they needed for Derek Broussard, ladies and gentlemen. And after quickly realizing that Broussard was not cutting it, they would make a massive blockbuster trade. To acquire Matt Duchesne, trading Kyle Turris, Shane Bowers who was just drafted in the first round, a first and a third round pick for Matt Duchesne. A trade that probably wouldn't look so bad if this team didn't completely implode as they had to send Colorado their 2019 first round pick, which turned out to be Bowen Byram. Because that year, shit hit the fan. As the season would start, with several Senators players being caught trashing the organization and coaching staff in a damn Uber. Oh, and what's that? More drama? Mike Hoffman's girlfriend would reportedly bowling Eric Carlson's wife for having a stillborn baby. Just brutal, man. Which in turn would result in the Senators trading Mike Hoffman for a bag of chips. Not a great return for a 30 goal scorer. Because without this drama, this doesn't happen. But okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Because one year after making it to the conference finals, the Senators would finish second last in the entire NHL. A feat that has been only recently topped by the Montreal Canadiens. And at this point, the locker room and culture of this organization was in utter ruins. Not to mention, even with all this team drama. Add on the fact that there was more drama, Regarding the fact that the Senators arena was built in a horrible location, attendance was not where it should have been, resulting in the Ottawa Senators ownership embarrassing themselves constantly on the news, as they would plead, pretty please Ottawa, for a new arena. Even though that relative to the rest of the NHL and just sports world in general, they had a brand new arena. We're just getting started. Because after all this chaos, it would come out that the Senators initially lowballed Eric Carlson on a new contract, which made him pretty angry. Which makes sense, as Carlson for nearly a decade at this point, carried the entire organization on his shoulders. As he would then basically tell the Senators that he was not resigning and that he wanted to be traded.
For what seemed like an eternity, we saw many rumblings and rumors of where Eric Carlson was going to be traded. Until finally, the San Jose Sharks would complete a blockbuster deal, sending DeMello, Chris Tierney, Josh Norris, and three draft picks. One of them being a 2020 first round pick. And this is where the tide would begin to change for the Senators. Because when this trade happened, fans and analysts were roasting the Ottawa Senators. Not only did they get absolutely fleeced in the Matt Duchesne trade, but they would get fleeced once again, trading arguably their greatest franchise player. For a bunch of assets who are, you know, alright, but they did not receive anything comparable to Carlson. However, in what could only be told in fairy tales, the San Jose Sharks would pull on Ottawa Senators. Reverse Uno card, baby. As they too would have an unexpected but major collapse. Because in the 2019-2020 season, they would finish third last in the league. Also meaning, that first round pick, which was supposed to be around pick number 25, well, that turned into Tim Stutzla. An extremely important piece to the Senators' future. Josh Norris, the 2017 first round pick included in this trade, has now developed into a 40 goal scorer. All this for the right to sign Eric Carlson to an eight year, $92 million contract, which is arguably the worst contract in the NHL. Because today, Eric Carlson is a shell of his former self. Is he still a good defenseman? I think so, but he's worth probably half of his 11.5 million AAV. So let's hope he bounces back. However, even though in hindsight this trade was phenomenal, the dumpster fire that was the Ottawa Senators was still burning strong because in the 2018-2019 season, shit would once again hit the fan. Big poo everywhere. Because after a disastrous start, the Senators realized that any hopes of re-signing Duchesne and keeping him long-term went out the window. Thus, they would trade Duchesne for Jonathan Davidson, Vitaly Abramov, and a 2019 first round pick, which turned out to be Lassie Thompson. Meaning, they basically traded Bowen Byram for Lassie Thompson. They'd also trade Ryan Dezingle, but made out fairly well. But it doesn't stop there. Because just days after the Duchesne trade, the Senators would ship out Mark Stone for Oscar Lindbergh, Eric Brandstrom, and a second. Which, to be honest, looks like another horrendous trade. The Ottawa Senators within three years went from a contender to dead last in the NHL. However, this dumpster on fire for the first time in three years started to dwindle. Thomas Chabot would break out as a top pairing defenseman. Brady Kachuk would revolutionize the team. Tim Stutzel would break out. Josh Norris and Drake Batherson would break out. And Shane Pinto and Jake Sanderson, among other blue chip prospects. Once again, highlighting that Ottawa is low key, elite, a drafting. Scott Sabarin. Chance in front of the Alex Sabarin scores! I heard that guy's pretty good. So yes, they were still hot garbage. But that garbage had a pine cone in it, ready to burst to life from the flames. And this season, that pine cone may just be ready, as they would trade the seventh overall pick, fleecing Chicago for Alex Debrinket. They would sign Claude Giroux, who still has a lot left to give, to a three-year, 6.5 million AAV deal. Not to mention, they did not want a Mark Stone repeat. Thus, they have now locked up all of their future to long-term deals, which are risky today, but may prove to be a bargain in the future, as we expect the salary cap to significantly rise. And so here is their 2019 roster on paper. And here is their roster today. Insane! actually insane that they were somehow able to complete a full rebuild within what felt like four years and so after four years of chaos this team is on the up and led by brady kachuk has some very exciting hockey ahead mm -hmm.